working in the spirit of the Golden Empire. This is 17 News at 530. Welcome back. New at 530, we have an update tonight on an ongoing 17 News investigation. It's about the $4 billion hydrogen energy California plant proposed for west of Bakersfield. Now, the federal government pledged $400 million to help build the plant, but documents we've just obtained show federal funding has stopped at least temporarily, until this project owner can prove the plan is still viable. Yeah, and the money already spent, 153 million taxpayer <laughs> dollars from a stimulus program aimed at creating jobs with shovel-ready projects. Five years after the grant was awarded, no shovel has hit the ground and only 27 jobs have been created. That's five and a half million dollars per job. Now, we've been fighting for months to learn more about what's happening with the proposed plant. We know how much the government spent. We wanted to know how much HECA has spent, and this is what we got. Right here, this tome of documents sent to us by the federal government. Salaries all blacked out. We wanted to know and been asking all along about the dangers that the plant poses as well. Also blacked out. This is the risk assessment we got from the government. It's just the latest chapter in what's turning out to be a long investigation. I get calls for requests for tours on a weekly basis, and we haven't even broken ground. That was April, eight months after that interview, and roughly 153 million taxpayer dollars spent, HECA still hasn't broken ground. It's time to walk away and not waste any more money on this. This is what SES Energy has planned a $4 billion plant that burns coal to produce electricity and uses its byproduct, CO2, to boost nearby oil production. It's, uh, it's good for the state, it's good for the nation. After months of slowly creeping through the regulatory process, taxpayer spending on the project has ground to a halt as federal auditors seek evidence the plan is still viable. They've had struggles after struggles where people have fallen out of the project because it just does not pencil out. We placed more than a half dozen calls over the last four months, trying to get an update from parent company SCS Energy about HECA. Spokeswoman Tiffany Rao eventually emailed us back to say the HECA team is tied up. She said it's just not a convenient time for an on-camera interview, and it hasn't been convenient for months. She said HECA backers have nothing new to report on the project right now, but insists SCS Energy will be moving forward with construction on the project sometime in 2015. One big danger is, is, a, is a big rupture somewhere of CO2. The HECA project faces a slew of serious hurdles, like what to do with the plant's main byproduct, carbon dioxide. It's a greenhouse gas that must be captured and not released into the atmosphere for this to qualify as a clean energy project. The tentative plan was to ship the CO2 to a yet-to-be-built facility operated by Occidental Petroleum. The gas would be used in this nearby field to help tease oil out of the ground. But Occidental dissolved earlier this year, jettisoning its California oil assets into a separate company called California Resources Corporation. Representatives for California Resources Corporation also declined to be interviewed on camera for this story. But spokeswoman Holly Arnold sent us this email saying, quote, the company is not currently in negotiations with the developer of the Hydrogen Energy California project. Therefore, we have nothing to add to this story. And then there's coal. The HECA plant would burn. The city of Wasco approved the expansion of the Savage Coal Facility in March to increase its annual shipments from 900,000 tons to 1.5 million tons to help facilitate the HECA plant's needs. But Franz and the Sierra Club have sued the city, saying a proper environmental review was never performed. The HECA project is paying Savage $35,000 a month for the option of using that plant and is paid close to $100,000 to help Savage fight the lawsuit. If Savage in Wasco can't get the expansion permit, they can't supply enough coal to the HECA project. None of those misgivings have slowed the spending of federal money awarded to the project under the Stimulus Act of 2009 amid the throes of the recession. 17 News filed a flurry of requests with the Department of Energy seeking detailed records of where your money was spent. After months of waiting and our request being directed to the wrong place several times, we received this ream of reports. 
but key portions have been blacked out, like this list of risks the plant poses and possible solutions. Also blacked out, the hourly rate and compensation of SCS executives and employees paid in part under the federal grant. Officials say that's a HECA business secret. But what we do know about spending is this. The HECA project was paying $1,800 per month for this information center on Front Street in Buttonwillow, more than $37,000 in total. Today, the building sits empty. And taxpayers have been shelling out $3,100 to rent office space in a legal firm up in San Francisco, and almost $4,000 a month for an office in Concord, Massachusetts, where SCS is headquartered. Spokeswoman Tiffany Rao's consulting company has consistently billed the government around $18,000 a month for the past several years. In all, more than a half million dollars. Records show more than 10 million taxpayer dollars alone went to purchasing credits to offset the estimated 500 tons of pollutants HECA plans to release in the air every year. And there's the $97,000 that went to consultant Daniel P. Schrag, the Harvard professor also is a member of the President's Council of Advisors on Science and Technology. Schrag has been a big fan of the project, even though in June of last year, he urged the Obama administration to, quote, wage a war on coal. I've worked for this project now for about eight years. And I am, you know, I have, long before I met them, I published extensively on this, and I've been a broad fan of this technology. Fundamentally, uh, uh, nobody could pay me enough money to just lie to people about about uh, this sort of uh, technology. Um, uh, that's certainly not enough money to make me uh, uh, just fabricate information. Though the project could still be viable, critics say if the plant is never built, it will amount to one colossal waste. Why would you invest taxpayer money if you didn't have the project being viable? Um, Who's making that decision? Because the taxpayers didn't get to make that decision. And again, there is no word tonight on a deal between HECA and California Resources Corporation to take that CO2 for oil production. That is a sticking point for the entire project to move forward. And we should note the tough climate that oil companies face with crude trading between $55 and $60 a barrel right now. But there's no deadline either in terms of the federal funds. To see the document that we obtained in researching this project, check out our website. It is kerngoldenempire.com and click on the link for this story.